What's up guys, JV here. We're in beautiful Austin, Texas, the home of Flow Wrestling. Today we're gonna meet up with world and Olympic champion in women's wrestling, Tamira Mensa Stock. We're gonna do a little dancing, maybe a little singing. We're gonna talk about how she got into the sport, the challenges that she's had to overcome, and everything that makes her such a lovable human being and superstar in the sport of women's freestyle wrestling. Women's freestyle, 68 kilos, 149 and a half pounds. Representing Titan Mercury, Tamira. Mensa, time! Tamira out of Texas, two-time Uregan champion. And I don't believe any other American's ever done that. Stock immediately attacked, has a hand on the leg, and for nothing she leads, and she's going right back to work, making 6-0. Mensa, Stock, trying to put a stop to this one inside the first period. Mensa, Stock goes right in for two. Nice counter here by Mensa, Stock. Right away attacking Randy Belt, she's gonna score two. Mensa stock, launch after launch now. She has found her offense. Oh, wow. Mensa stock ounces. Incredible performance by Mensa stock. And she's a certified goofball. 100%. So if you know anything about Tamir Mensa Stock, you know that she loves to sing and dance. It's actually one of the ways that she stays calm before a big time matchup, doing karaoke and playing Just Dance. Actually, I think I hear it right now. Let's go check it out. <laughs> oh, Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you too. What do you got going on here? Oh, I'm doing just dance. Oh, it's really fun. Look, I was doing really good too. You want to join me? I would love to, it's but I'm really scared because I don't like dancing in front of people. So you're gonna have to teach me how to play oh, and I teach would, me how to dance in the process. I would totally <laughs> love to. Okay, so we'll, we'll, I'll follow along. I'll have you follow along just a little bit, but this right here tells you what to do when you're dancing. Okay. And these, this is the instructor. So we try to follow the kitty when they that. dance. Instructions okay. right here. And this will be the score right there. But Oh, so this is a competition. We're trying to beat one another. This is a competition. Oh, this is this big is, time. I this love is a it. competition. This tells us how good we're doing. <laughs> so I do. you're five stars before we came in. Tell us a little bit about your upbringing. Oh, dang. You went home, didn't you? Okay. Yeah, from the beginning. Where were you born? Where were you raised? What was it like? How many siblings did you have as a little one? Oh, snap. Okay, well, humble beginnings. I was born in Chicago, Illinois, but raised in Texas, Houston, Texas, and wasn't at any sports when I was younger. Like, no sports at all. Started in sports when I was in middle school. Were your parents athletes? My dad said that he was an athlete. He was in track and field, but he mostly fought after school because in Africa it was pretty rough. Yeah. 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 Now, what part of Africa was he from? Ghana. Ghana. Ghana, yeah. That's my roots are from Ghana. Yeah. I did a lineage <laughs> test, and 86% of my genealogy originated in Ghana. Ghana you're, and the Ivory Coast. You're so, more Ghanaian than me. Really? Yeah. 86%. I was 49%. Wow. But what was uh, the other large part? Nigerian. Nigerian. And uh, some... Uh, Europe and a little bit of Indian. That's crazy. Because like, well, my awesome. mom's side. That's why we're such great wrestlers. <laughs> and we both have good double legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Ghanaian in us. Well, actually, technically it's the African in us. Like, that really, because I was 96% African. So, got you on that one. So your dad came from Ghana? <laughs> yes, dad came from Ghana. Yep. He was in you know, some fights and track. And my mom did basketball, swimming, and track. When we got to high school, I was still in track and field, and my mom had told my twin she needed to join a sport because, you know, an idle mind, it's a playground for the devil, and she's being super sedative, and she was like, hey, join a sport. So she didn't want to do anything conventional, like nothing at all. She didn't like basketball, she didn't like track, cheerleading, dance, you name it, she didn't like it. But she did find that there was wrestling and it intrigued her a lot. And she took my mom to an open mat and my mom told her to quit. She was like, definitely She's not. Like, no. This isn't for you, <laughs> yeah. for us. For yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do not bring this into the household, find another sport. And 
my twin refused and then she ended up dragging me into it. So instead of your sister quitting, she was like, let me go get Tamira. <laughs> yeah. Now mom can't make us both quit. <laughs> yeah. And the coaches had said they need to go find somebody athletic. And my twin was like, I know just the person. <laughs> yeah. So she got me and I hated it. I hate, <laughs> hate is a strong word, but it's how I truly felt because mm. I was a germaphobe. And being in track and field, you know, I wore my hoops, my makeup, my hair was permed. Yep. Nobody would touch me except for a simple baton pass. Sure. And when I got to like when I got to wrestling, there was contact, sweat on sweat, face to face. It was disgusting. And then people very were intimate. very intimidating. And people would pick me up, throw me down. It was very rude. Mm. I thought it was rude. So I went to quit immediately. But I waited it out about a month, had our first team duel. They bumped me up two weight classes and I pinned the girl and she was a state qualifier. And that was the beginning of a beautiful, rough friendship with wrestling. So at what point from hating it from its inception to actually enjoying the process and liking what you were doing, was it that first pin of the state qualifier? When did you start loving wrestling? It was then. and. I still actually had to try to get to love it because I was in two sports, track and field and wrestling. And I think what captivated me the most wasn't the fact that I was a natural, but the fact that the people, the camaraderie was incredible. Yeah. Like track and field, not so nice to me. But in wrestling, they were really just opening. Like they didn't call me any kind of names. They were just nice and loving. So what was the name of your high school? Tamir? Morton Ranch High School. Morton Ranch, was it a good place? I think it was a great place. I still think it's a good, they made a day for me. <laughs> it's a mere mental day. Yeah. Amazing. Like it's. What's that day consist of? What do you have to do on mental day? You have to wear red, white, and blue. November nice. 8th. I gotta remember that, November 8th. We gotta put that on our calendar. It's so, right? I wanna try to make it next year. Yeah. Just so I can pop up, but. It's, it's just commemorating me and like everybody gets to wear red, white, and blue and just just be honored, I guess, that there's somebody from their school that was there and that became successful, so. Famous. Oh, just my successful, bad. successful, famous. I like to say well-known. That's my way. Of Think about that. You go from being bullied as a freshman to having your own day in the same town <laughs> that you grew up in, like what does that feel like? Oh snap, that's an, you just put that in perspective. <laughs> I bet a lot of the same people that bullied you as a kid um, recognize that are in that same town that now there's a day <laughs> named after the girl that they were mean to many mm. years ago. Talk about a humbling feeling, huh? <sighs> Karma is a mirror, <laughs> so I greatly appreciate that. So it seems like wrestling was kind of the vessel for you to gain confidence from all the things that you experienced as a young woman. Oh what was God. it about wrestling that helped build you up? I don't know what it is about wrestling. Like when I joined, it gave me permission to be strong and beautiful. And well, shoot, like that was incredible because I'm still a girly girl. Like look at my dress. Like I, I like to be a female. Yep. But wrestling gives me that permission to also be this ruthless athlete mm. and I love that yeah. and yeah wrestling just helped give me more confidence in myself and I know if a nice person like me is being bullied and just mistreated there are other people feeling the same way and I just want to get the word out to them like hey you are a very powerful strong beautiful woman and wrestling can help you recognize that and I don't know how every single room in America is but I know how the one I was in, how like where I grew up, and it was nothing but love. And I loved it. Great feeling. You won a state title. Step off the mat. Your sister wins a state title. Take turns talking about the experience. So, what was it like having a sister, a twin sister, identical twin sister? Ah, she's not that identical. In <laughs> the same sport as you. Awesome. What was that like? Okay, so, terrible fun fact, um, it was awesome, and then she got hurt really bad. So she was injured for 22 months, so our senior year, 
we actually were back-to-back -back state champions. And we call her the comeback kid. Mm. And she was actually better at wrestling than I ever was. She was an All-American, four-time All-American, national champion, I think like two times. So she did her thing. In another world, I think we could have done like Olympic champs back to back, mm. for sure. Like, I know that in my heart, if, you know, circumstances were different. Well, awesome. <laughs> I got a feeling that Mensa sister is going to be a household name coming up. And uh, I had a blast watching you guys wrestle. Do you have anything else to share with the wrestling world? Thank you for having us. So take us back to 2009. Big part of your life changed. Tell me about what you remember from that day. Uh, <laughs> I remember everything. We had a, a tournament. My dad was dressed to the nines, wearing a purple suit. He didn't know what color it was, but <laughs> he always dressed in a suit. He drove from Louisiana, like always, but this time by himself. And um, uh, we, we basically spent the, the day together. Um, my twin wasn't there, but uh, my teammates were. And one of my friends that I'm still friends with now, Kristen, she and a few other people played Uno with him. And my dad was colorblind and he managed to beat them. And <laughs> they were like... <laughs> Probably can't be very good at Uno if you're colorblind though. <laughs> no, he's not that good. And he just saw a bunch of grays, but... He played Uno, he beat them. Um, I won the whole tournament, he was really proud. And um, that night, I wanted, to, I wanted him to actually come back to Texas with us instead of him going back to Louisiana. So I just wanted to spend more time with them. Daddy's girl, like, we talked every single day, like five times a day. If it was once, something was wrong. And um, we, uh, he told me no, he had to get back to work. I said, okay, well, I guess I'll just go on the bus. And um, I had a boyfriend at the time that my dad had suspicions about, but did not know. I was hiding it from him because he said, no boyfriends until you're 30. My dad called me when I was on the bus and I had said, daddy, I don't want to talk right now. I'm trying to sleep. Can I call you in the morning? And he was like, all right. And, um, Instead, I called my boyfriend and uh, talked on the phone with him, <laughs> which I don't have a lot of regrets, but I, st I regret talking to my boyfriend instead of my dad because I probably could have kept my dad awake. <laughs> Till this day, all I can think about is, what if I would have stayed on the phone with him? because they said that he fell asleep at the wheel. And then they also have like some weird stuff, like how Africans are, like there was voodoo involved, like somebody was out to get him. Regardless, it doesn't matter, I lost my father. It was worst day of my life. I wanted to quit wrestling. I dropped AP classes. I was like, no, I don't want to do anything. But my mom said I have to go back to school. <laughs> and um, the wrestling team honestly didn't want me to leave. And they were there for me. There was just so much support. And yeah, it was, it was rough. What do you remember <laughs> most about your dad? <laughs> Honestly, uh, his smile, his personality, how he treated people, and well, I remember everything about him. Like when I mentioned, like with the stubble, like hugs, hugs galore. Like he would give me a hug and like rub his cheeks on my face, and he was extremely giving. And that's probably why I am how I am now, just wanting to give to people because I know how it affects people. I remember a lot about him. And uh, I just remember he touched a lot of lives and impacted everyone he came in contact with. And I wish, I wish he was still here because that man would be extremely proud. And if he could see all these years later that you become an Olympic champion, what do you think he'd say? He knew it. He knew I could do it. He'd, he'd be extremely proud and honestly, 
I think about what he would say, but I have a portrait of him that I look at every day, and I just go, I know you're proud. And he has that little smug smile, like, you know I am. <laughs>Let's talk a little bit about you making the transition to college. Come here, Mensa. Waylon Baptist. She's going single leg early. And your sister decided to go to the school together. Yeah. Compete alongside one another. Again, at the next level. What was it like? Uh, it was awesome. Because it was, it was a new experience, new town. Same state. But um, we had each other. And I... I like to hold on to people pretty tightly. Being at college with my twin was awesome because I didn't have to get to know someone all over again. Like I got to bring my best friend with me and experience that life together and keep us both on track like yep. with studies and practices and it was, it was awesome. So right. when did you first think about the senior level? Was there ever a point in time where you're like, I want to be an Olympic champion, or did you slowly just kind of transition into this phase post-collegiate? My first year of wrestling, I wanted to be an Olympic champ. Your very first year <laughs> in high school. In high school. When you hated wrestling. <laughs> well, after I uh, won second at state, I was like, hold up. Wait, state is really important? Like, this is like a big deal. Huh. I'm a natural? Like, I, I didn't really understand, like, who I truly was in wrestling. I did not know there was a senior level. I, I did not know there was college. Sure. I knew nothing in between, just Olympics. So. The second in the state, Olympics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That was it. Yeah. The, the hell in between, nobody told me about. Mm -hmm. But I think that's how I got where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. Because... I trusted in what my coaches were doing and like all that hard work and dedication and just time they put into me. And then also having fun. Like there was, I laughed at every single practice and I danced at almost every practice. Having fun was definitely key. I had a vision when I first started wrestling. I was like, be an Olympic champ and do it kindly. So how does this help you to stay calm before big time matchups? I know that a lot of times you like to dance and do karaoke. Yes. So. It helps me stay calm because it's fun and yeah. it gets my mind off of competition because I, I wrestle better when I'm not stressed out, when I'm totally calm, relaxed, having fun because mm -hmm. I like to enjoy the journey and enjoy the process. And this is a part of my process, singing and dancing. This is a part of the process. This <laughs> yeah. keeps you in shape, yes. helps you lose weight, and yes. also helps take your mind off of the wrestling. Yes, all good things. This, good this only helps me. It doesn't hurt me. only helps me. Can I try a little uh. bit? Absolutely. Right, let's, do, let's do Don't Start Now. I like that song. Yeah? Don't yeah. Start Now. The only time I ever dance is at a wedding. So this is way out of my comfort zone, but I trust you. So I'm going to go oh, for it. Oh, no, no. It's going to be really fun. So hold it in between your hand like this. Yeah, so you don't press it. You don't want right. to press the buttons. Don't, don't press any buttons. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Jenny, you're doing great. I got no hip. I'm I'm real stiff in the hips. I got no. I got no. <laughs> oh, she's walking out. Oh gosh. Don't jump now. Oh Ooh. snap. <laughs> she, hey. She I missed that one. <laughs> I'm just making up stuff now. <laughs> and you're still doing good though. You're putting Jacob's score up high. Tell, tell me a little bit about, this is fast forwarding a little bit, but tell me a little bit about your signature celebration, right? Your heart. I've seen you do this a lot after all of your most recent victories yeah. and defeats. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Me and Helen were talking about it because we were roommates and I didn't realize there were discrepancies going on in the Olympics. It, I live under a rock. I'm like, video games and anime. What do you mean? There, discrepancies? Like, well, just people protesting, like uh, athletes. Just, you know, speaking out what sure. they what they believe in, and that's all fine and dandy. But she had asked me uh, what I thought about it, and she she also explained to me what was going on. And I was like, "What, Helen? That's that's happening?" She was like, "Yeah. What do you think about that? I'm just curious." And I gave her my insight, and I told her why I believed I was here on Earth, and that I wanted to spread love, spread joy, and represent my country as best I can. 
I wanted to show people that I meant that. And I was like, and I don't really know how to show them, but you know what I'll do? I'm gonna put up a heart symbol and I'm gonna let people know I'm here to spread love. And she was like, no way, you're gonna do that? I'm like, yes! I'm gonna do that after every single match. Win or lose, I'm gonna do that after every match. And she was like, that's so cool. We should try to get like the other girls to do it. I'm like, you can. And if not, like if you do it, it'll be great. But I just, I'm just here to spread love, joy, smiles. And that's pretty much where it started, like yeah. in Japan. And it caught on. I did not know it was gonna ca catch on. I just wanted to show people, hey, your love. Yeah. And oh my gosh, yeah, I totally caught on. Like people ask for pictures and like, can we do the hearts? <laughs> You're like, oh. Two signatures. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, and it's weird because leading up to the Olympics, um, Adeline would have like the double wave, and I think Jakara actually does double waves too. And I didn't want to be like everybody else, so it was kind of cool and. Um, organic how it happened yeah. and, and it's it's yours it's mine like you have ownership of this movie i need to think of something i need like a signature <laughs> okay i have nothing well yeah you do What's, <laughs> that's, that's, like for everybody like, <laughs> i need i need to like sit down and really think of something good that like, i can make my own it's awesome you've inspired me i i think any you yeah it'll it'll come seriously i do like five songs in a row and i'm just drenched in sweat <laughs> Hey. I just snapped in there. That was not on the screen, but I, I just snapped no, for some reason. You make I felt it, like I do, needed to you snap. You do it on your there. own. <laughs> Good job, Jordan. Man, you're killing it. Thank you. Wow. Oh, hey, you got hey. the last one. I had it. Let's go. <laughs> that was good. I definitely put my hands on my hips when she said. Wait, how did I lose? I'm just kidding. I, I know exactly how I lost. I wasn't bad though. Look at that. No. Four stars. Yeah. 8150. No, that was really New good. high score. I I you crushed it. So when I think of your wrestling career, I think of a superhero that always possessed these amazing powers, but wasn't yet sure how to harness them and use them. I watched you go from Olympian in 2016. Not even. Olympic trials winner in 2016, wasn't able to qualify the weight to world team member in 2017, but no medal. God. Bronze in 2018, champ in 2019, and then an Olympic gold medalist in 2021. Like your progression has been astounding, but it's been slow and methodical. Talk a little bit about the difference in who you are now and to who you were at that point. Mm, so, who I was back then was afraid to showcase who I was. Because in high school, it was kind of the same thing, and the same in college. I had to realize who I was. I think I was, all, I think I could have made the Olympic team in 2016 if I just sucked it up. Because I remember the, that mindset of, man, I don't want to be here right now. Oh my gosh, does she really just score? All I have to do is stay down. But she's she's irritating me. And I wanna I wanna do what she wants me to do. Like I remember the thoughts and being coerced into wrestling how they wanted me to wrestle. And I am so much more stubborn now. Hmm. I'm like I can <laughs> see it. Your focus is yeah. astounding. When you yeah. take off your glasses and you have your <laughs> hair in your puffs Clark and you Kent. step into the tunnel. Literally, you become a completely different person. Like, what is, what is the transformation that you make from being loving and carefree in the warm-up area to being dialed in and a fierce competitor once you arrive at the mat? The process is telling myself that I need to trust the process and that God has allowed me to do everything that I needed to do up until this point. Yeah. And he's given me all the tools. So I need to go out there, shine my light, and showcase him through me. And someone had told me, because I wasn't shining my light and I wasn't being the athlete that I could have been or could be, I was actually doing a disservice to God. And I was offended. Like, what do you mean? I, I go to church all the time. You're like, no, no, no. God gave you like 
athletic gifts mm. and you're holding back and that's doing a disservice to him. So I was like, How okay. You feel? It made me feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was almost ashamed. Mm. And so that was a switch I believe to help me just catapult myself into what he already had planned for me. Have you broken a sweat yet? Yeah. A little right. bit? Wait, did you just, did no, you just choose so. this one? No, what? what is this? What is She's this? hard! <laughs> That's why I wanted to do, we gotta do a hard one. Let's do, do one hard do one. Hard? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, here she comes. Here she comes. Oh, and she's up. Oh, hey. Oh. Oh. Oh, real oh, sultry. Oh, though. gosh. <laughs> hey, 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 oh. Hey. Oh. Oh, gosh. Oh, I'm definitely going to lose this. <laughs> you getting it. So, Olympic champion. Yes. Olympic gold medalist in Tokyo. Yes in summer 2021. When you stand on top of that podium and you have that gold medal placed around your neck and you watch your flag hoisted higher than all of the other countries and you hear the national anthem playing, what's that experience like? It was a little sad because of COVID mm. and there was no one there. Mm. And I didn't hear like the crowd, like really as much as I did in 2019. So it was bittersweet. I, I still cried on the podium, but then also I was like, there's a freaking mask on my face. I can't cry right. <laughs> so wow. I was, I won't say I was being ungrateful, but it was. Different experience than you expected for. Yeah. Like an Olympic I. Ceremony. Way, way different experience. Like I envisioned my Olympic ceremony. Well, I envisioned going to the Olympic ceremony mm -hmm. and you couldn't even do that. The, the tour that I did after was awesome. Yeah. and that made it worth it. And I was extremely proud to represent my, com my country because that's what every wrestler's dream is. Yeah, and you instantly become a hero. Okay, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I think with Sweaty. the social climate being yes. the way that it has been over the last few years with all the, you know, civil unrest. Um, yes. You know, due to police brutality, and racism throughout the country, that being a black athlete has become very difficult because mm -hmm. you love country, but you love your blackness and your culture. It's like you did a very good job at mingling the two. In the process of a history-breaking performance, becoming the first black woman to ever win an Olympic gold medal, first state champion in your high school's history, yes. first black woman to ever win an Olympic gold medal in freestyle wrestling, you are a hero to all people, but particularly little black girls that will go on to wrestle someday. What do you tell them? I, so I like to, I like to uh, tell all, all little girls because I know I don't want to just inspire just one race. I want them to know, hey, do not isolate yourself from, from anyone. Like we are all equal and we need to all be treated equal. And I want to tell every single little girl that you can do anything through Christ. Like, he strengthens you, and you are beautiful, you are smart. <laughs> what is it, the health? You are beautiful, you are smart, you are kind, you is important. You're important. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <That's right. laughs> but like hella illiterate, like, you is important. Mm -hmm. And I want them to know that, because like I said earlier, if I was bullied, I'm sure they're possibly down and out about themselves, struggling in some way, shape, or form. And I need them to know you are a powerful young woman and you can impact so many lives or one life. But regardless, you can impact a life and make a difference, a huge difference. I wanna be that good role model for the young girls and for young boys, cause they need good women role models too. Like, I wanna show boys out there like, hey, you can have a wife that is beautiful, strong, smart, influential. Women, you can be that there were little girls, you can be that woman that is beautiful, strong, influential, and just powerful. Like, not be me, be better than me. And so you've achieved profound levels of success from when you set out as a young woman in Houston, Texas to 
now being here, Olympic champion, world champion, multiple world medals, top 100 wrestler of all time. Really? Yes. You <laughs> know that. You were raked as one of the top 100 wrestlers in US history. I just heard that just now. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, Phenomenal. Did I mention Phenomenal. I live under a rock? You have. Uh, yeah. A lot of Just Dance has probably taken time away from you, <laughs> recognizing that you're one of the best to ever do it. But uh, profound level of success. Now you've arrived. What's it like being at the top? What's next? I will say that it's not lonely. And someone once told me that it was lonely at the top. And I found that it isn't. And I think it's because I put God first. Mm -hmm. And I made sure I didn't like let other people, friends and family fall to the wayside. And it has been incredible. Ah, that was good. That was awesome. That was I'm tired now. My legs were burning. <laughs> I got 9,000 though, so I've improved. Yes. Last one I was only 8,100. Exactly. That was a thousand point improvement right there. Yeah, exactly, right? Not 1% better. That was like, This is like, oh my gosh. Not recovery. This is a workout. How but it's could a you good How could you like do this and not go the next day like, I did not rest. I worked too hard the day before dancing. Because like, I don't think, like when I do this dancing, I don't think of it as like another workout. I think of it yeah. having fun and it is a recovery because there is no contact. Yeah. And like the contact from wrestling, that's what beats down the body in sure. my personal opinion. So when I'm having a sweat and having fun, it's like playing basketball or, you know, like tennis, like, hey, you wanna just go have some fun? Like some, yep. shoot some balls around? Like uh -huh. it's the same thing. And like you're laughing, you're having fun and you're losing weight in the process. And Who's your favorite person to do this with? Um, my favorite person is anyone I can drag into it to do it with me. Who's your favorite wrestler to do it with, should I ask? My favorite wrestler? I don't know, but I will say my favorite wrestler to sing with was Ellis Coleman. Yeah? Yeah. Is he fun? Oh my gosh! I could always count on him. Like if I needed a singing partner and if he wasn't going to practice, yep. I'd be like, yo, Ellis, you want a karaoke? He, let's go. Let's karaoke, let's get, let's get it. Man, you've got so many opportunities on the table. You know, you've, you've earned them. You've truly earned them. <laughs> Talk about a little bit about your future and, and what you're thinking about from <laughs> a wrestling perspective. Are you, do you wanna win more? Do you wanna be a two-time Olympic champion or more world championships in your future? Or are you just kind of figuring things out on the fly right now? I, I'm not entirely sure, mm -hmm. but Right now I'm just stepping back and just having time with my husband and loving life yeah. and doing nothing. That's nice too, right? <laughs> yes, that and is talking nice. about husband, something that we don't really talk about, oh. but a lot of women athletes are their lifestyles outside of sport. Yes. I can be married, have multiple kids, oh. and still continue to compete. And nothing really changes for me inside yeah. of the wrestling arena. It's completely different for you. A lot of our great women in sport have to put their lives on hold, their personal lives on hold, in order to pursue their goals inside of athletics. Tell me a little bit about what you've missed out on, position that you're in now, what you're hoping to get in the future, and kind of the sacrifices that you had to make to be so great at wrestling. I'm excited for it. Like, I, I want to be a mom. Wrestling, I'm not going to say it stopped me because I've been told that I can have a child and then come back to wrestling. However, I don't want to do that because I know, I've seen people, um, two women actually, have children and then come back to wrestling. And when they traveled overseas, they cried and said that they missed their children. And I know that I get very emotional. And if I'm crying about well, things I'm crying about now, then for sure I'm gonna be missing my children. It's hard as a female wrestling when you want to build that family. Wrestling is giving me the platform to inspire other little girls, and so I feel like I have a bunch of children all around that I'm still able to influence. So it's, it's okay that I'm currently not impregnated 
because I have so many little girls to inspire. Tamira, <laughs> phenomenal job. <laughs> Love hearing your story. You're such a beautiful soul, beautiful person, a great athlete, a beast, and so much fun to be around. So thankful that you got to sit down with me, be transparent, be vulnerable, and tell us everything that helped you become who you are today. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. There's no athlete quite like Tamira Mensah-Stock. When the world got an introduction to her this summer, after her Olympic gold medal final, they recognized what we have seen for many years, that she's got a heart of gold and a spirit unlike any other in sports. I'm so thankful for her friendship and all we've got to experience with her today. She is truly a groundbreaker in the sport of women's freestyle wrestling.